Where was I? Oh yeah. Chapter 7. Nothing comes to pass. So I'm going to drink anyway. Fuck it. It's a good chapter. It makes some wonderful mistakes. It's nice to, you know, provide a service to folks. <clears throat> All right. Uh, chapter 7. A lot of heading here, so let's see what this says. A little preparation. The words of Alma, which he delivered to the people of Gideon, according to his own record, his testimony of the Redeemer. This is good. This is good. I, I, I peeked. Looking for phrases that repeat. This is good. I remember this. He commands the people for their righteousness. So that's the point of this whole book. This whole chapter. Pretty light, huh? <laughs> Behold, my beloved Brethren, seeing that I have been permitted to come unto you, therefore I attempt to address you in my language, yea, by my own mouth, seeing that it is the first time I have spoken to you by the words of my mouth. I get it, I know, but it's fucking stupid and funny. Yeah, he's in person. Awesome. <laughs> Live in person. Uh. Therefore, I attempt to address you in my language, yea, and by my own mouth. We're still in verse 1, by the way. It's a long one. Uh, uh. I have been wholly confined to the judgment seat. Wait, wait, wait. By the way. Yeah. Having had much business that I could not come unto you. Wow. That's some really inept writing, isn't it? <laughs> Second verse. And I'll take it from Still listening to Mr. Bowie. Can't get enough. And even I could not have come now, at this time, were it not that the judgment seat hath been given to another to reign in my stead. And the Lord in much mercy has granted that I should come unto you. Shades, shades of the Apostle Paul. And behold, I have come, having great hopes and much desire that I should find that ye have humbled yourselves before God, and that ye have continued in the supplicating of his grace, that I should find that ye were blameless before him, uncapitalized. That wasn't very satisfying. I have to do better than that. Uh, uh, high hopes and much desire that I should find that ye have humbled yourselves before God, and that ye have continued in the supplications of his grace, that I should find that ye were blameless before him, <coughs> that's a little better, that I should find that ye were not in the awful dilemma that our brethren were, in at Zarahemla. In at. We're in at. Okay. Uh, verse 4. Uh, and blessed be the name of God that he hath given me to know, yea, 
hath given unto me the exceeding great joy of knowing that they are established again in the ways of his righteousness. Pretty heavy stuff, right? Uh, fifth verse, and I trust according to the Spirit of God which is in me that I shall also have joy over you. Nevertheless, I do not desire that my joy over you, that my joy over you should come by the cause of so much afflictions and sorrow which I have had for the brethren at Sarah Himla. Let's talk shit about them, since we're in Gideon now. <laughs> for behold, my joy cometh over them after waiting through much affliction and sorrow. Verse 6, And behold, I trust that ye are not in a state of so much unbelief as were your brethren. I trust that ye are not lifted up in the pride of your hearts. Yea, I trust that ye have not set your hearts upon riches and in the vain things of the world. Yea, I trust that you do not worship idols, but that ye do worship the true and living God and that ye look forward to the remission of your sins with an everlasting faith which is to come. For no reason at all. It just came to pass. For behold, I say unto you, there be many things to come, and behold, there is one thing which is of more importance than they all. Dash. For behold, the time is not far distant that the capitalized Redeemer liveth and cometh among his people, uncapitalized his. Maybe that's an archaic kind of King James thing. I don't know if I've seen it before. Usually they're pretty anal about capitalizing anything with God. They even put Jesus' dialogue in red ink, which I kind of think is cool. On my blog, I changed his text to red just for the fuck of it. Even if I quote the Book of Mormon or the Quran. Uh, behold, I do not say that he will come among us at the time of his dwelling in his mortal tabernacle. Now, probably not till the third book of Nephi. For behold, the Spirit hath not said unto me that this should be the case. Now, as to this thing, I do not know, but this much I do know that the Lord God hath power to do all things which are according to his word. Wow! Somebody needs to fucking chisel that into something. Like maybe engrave it in gold. <laughs> or not. <laughs> That's pretty lightweight shit. And I'm waiting for something impressive that I haven't already seen before. But behold, the Spirit has said unto me this much unto you, saying, Cry unto this people, saying, Repent, yea, and prepare the way of the Lord in third Nephi. <laughs> oh, wait till you see this. It's worth it. Anticlimactic, but funny. Honestly. 
At least I think so. <laughs> Saying, uh, Repent ye and prepare the way of the Lord, and walk in the paths which are straight. <sighs> For, behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and the Son of God cometh upon the face of the earth. Why did I just get a porno flashback? Like a gigantic Godzilla-sized money shot or something. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> That's stupid. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> All right. Verse 10 is one you need to find and underline. And then when the little boys and the penguin outfits show up on their bicycles with their backpacks, ask them about this one. Verse 10 of 7 Alma. And behold, he, uncapitalized but still Jesus, shall be born of Mary at Jerusalem. Now the Quran doesn't even mention Jerusalem. I mean, Nazareth, uh, Bethlehem, excuse me. Yeah, the Quran never mentions Bethlehem in relation to JC, but. Uh, Jerusalem. Now, I believe in what first Nephi. I think it's verse. I got it. I got it tabbed. Verse eleven. Verse eleven. I got it tagged and underlined. <laughs> I knew I'd come back to that. Verse uh, eleven of first Nephi. I believe it is. If I look right. He's born in Nazareth. At least that's the way it looks. Yeah, verse 11, first Nephi. And verse uh, 10 of 7 Alma. Just for the, when the boys show up, ask them about it. Which one, Nazareth or Jerusalem? And what the fuck? What about Bethlehem? Christmas card. Checkmate! <laughs> yeah. Born of Mary at Jerusalem, which is the land of our forefathers. She being a virgin, a precious and chosen vessel. Who shall be overshadowed and conceive by the power of the Holy Ghost and bring forth a son. Yay! Even the Son of God! Verse 11. And he shall go forth suffering pains and afflictions and temptations of every kind. Really, every kind. Let's talk. I guess that's all we get. Huh? We'll just have to get used to getting less. More the same, but less. But less filling, also. <laughs> every kind, and this, that the word might be fulfilled, which saith... He, uncapitalized, will take upon him, uncapitalized, the pain and the sickness, <clears throat> uncapitalized, of his people. Twelve. And he will take upon him death, 
that he may loose the bands of death which bind his people and he will take upon him their infirmities. Really? Really? Haven't seen that happen. It's just crying statues and patterns and toast and stucco and shit and clouds. And his bow that his bowels may be filled <laughs> with mercy. Who's mercy? <laughs> oh wait, mercy's uncapitalized. Sorry. <laughs> According to the flesh that he uncapitalized may know according to the flesh how to succor his uncapitalized people according to their infirmities. All right, let's just get this out of the way. They're just not going to capitalize, you know, his, you know, personal pronoun. <laughs> it's always lowercase. I'm just not going to keep saying it, all right? Uh, Thirteen. Don't you like the way I'm doing it now? Isn't this better? <laughs> At least it helps with editing. Now, the Spirit knoweth all things. Nevertheless, the Son of God suffereth according to the flesh that he might take upon him the sins of his people that he might blot out their transgressions according to the power of his deliverance. And now, behold, this is the testimony which is in me. 14. Now I say unto you that ye must repent and be born again. For the Spirit saith, If ye are not born again, ye cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Uh, which is be over the rainbow, I understand, or beyond it. Or <laughs> Therefore, come and be baptized unto repentance, that ye may be washed from your sins, that ye may have faith in the capitalized Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, who is mighty to save and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. Yea, I say unto you, come and fear not. And there's no reason for this. Actually, there is, but it has nothing to do with games. just too much to ask of me to read this book without getting a head change. This is some more of that Blackberry. I went to Bethmo and they had it. But they were out of Holy Grail Ale, which I really wanted, but this is nice. And there's no structure to this one. I'm just drinking. Fuck it. All right. Aha. Fifteen. Yea, I say unto you, come and fear not, and lay aside every sin which easily doth beset you which doth bind you down to destruction. Hey! Come and go forth and show unto your God that ye are willing to repent of your sins and enter into a covenant 
with him to keep his commandments and witness it unto him this day by going into the waters of baptism. Take a bath. 16. And whosoever doeth this and keepeth the commandments of God from hence thenceforth the same will remember that I say unto him, Yea! He will remember that I have said unto him, He shall have eternal life according to the testimony of the Holy Spirit, which testifieth in me. That's that little voice in his head that gets louder and louder. It has a special recipe for Kool-Aid. And now, my beloved brethren, do you believe these things? Don't you mean, do ye? Whatever, fuck it. Behold, I say unto you, yea, I know that ye, there we go, we're back on track. <laughs> like, bouncing back and forth. <laughs> ye believe them, and the way that I know that ye but all right, they, oh, whoops, yeah, ye, excuse me, forgot myself, my bad. <laughs> ye believe them is by the manifestation of the Spirit which is in me, and now because of your faith, wait, now because your faith is strong concerning that, yay! Concerning the things which I have spoken, great is my joy. <coughs> oh, thank you. A little more in a tank now. This is really nice. All right. Seventeen. I think that's... <laughs> this will be handy. <laughs> and now, my beloved brethren, do you believe these things? Behold, I say unto you, Yea, I know that ye believe them, and I know that I... Wait. Believe them, and the way that I know that ye believe them... That's what threw me off. Is by the manifestation of the Spirit which is in me. <clears throat> and now, because your faith is strong concerning that, yea, concerning the things which I have spoken, great is my joy. 18. For as I said unto you from the beginning, that I have much desire that ye were not in the state of dilemma, like your brethren, not to be mentioned. Even so, I have found that my desires have been gratified. For I perceive that ye are in the paths of righteousness. I perceive that ye are in the path which leads to the kingdom of God. Yea, I perceive that ye are making his path straight. 20. I believe that it has been made known unto you by the testimony of his word that he cannot walk in crooked paths. Neither doth he vary from that which he hath said, neither hath he a shadow of turning from the right or left, or from that which is right to that which is wrong, therefore his course is one eternal round. 
Yeah, see, that's what happens when you wear blinders. You just go in a straight path. Tunnel vision is useful in times like this. 21. And he doth not dwell in unholy temples, neither can filthiness or anything which is unclean be received unto the kingdom of God. Therefore I say unto you that time shall come, yay, and it shall be at the last day. May 21st, I understand. Or one of those other ones. One of these days someone's going to guess right. Someday it will come to pass. That's some strange shit, Mr. Bowie. <laughs> but I, I kind of like it. <laughs> Love it. Uh, one eternal round. 21. Oh, wait. Unholy temples. And it shall be on the last day that he who is filthy shall remain in his filthiness. E. So if a little kid dies on the last day and he took a dump in his diaper, that's it. Live with it. Uh, I don't know. I don't see anything in the footnotes. But it's now BC 82. <coughs> 22. And now, my beloved brethren, I have said these things unto you, that I may awaken you to the sense of your duty to God. Repetition again. Jesus Christ. Say something new. You know, it's like the Quran. If they took all the repetition out and all the uh, ritualized praising and salutations and apologies and grovelings we'd be like a have it like a three page pamphlet <laughs> same thing with this this would be about a I don't know 32 page comic book I think you could cover it <laughs> your duty to God damn it that ye may walk blameless before him whoever he is, that ye may walk after the holy order of God. Okay. God, they need to start capitalizing it. Those personal pronouns, you know. Royal, divine. Fucking hillbilly Shakespeare. They didn't know, they didn't know that, apparently. Uh, <coughs> Man, that tastes like blackberry. With a little hint of cherry. <laughs> Blameless before him, that ye may walk after the holy order of God, after which ye have been received. 23. And now I would that ye should be humble and be submissive and gentle, docile and well-trained, broke in. Yep, broken spirit. What is that? Broken heart, contrite spirit. That's just so fucking sexy to somebody else. <laughs> Easy to be entreated that's verse 23 easy to be entreated yeah. <clears throat> a profitable servant no doubt full of patience and long suffering being temperate in all things being diligent and keeping the commandments of God, which you got to get from somebody else. 
just take his word. It's easier that way. You won't get a headache or a brain freeze. Temperate in all things, being diligent, keeping the commandments of God at all times, asking for whatsoever things ye stand in need, both spiritual and temporal. Always returning thanks unto God for whatsoever things ye do receive. And see that ye have faith, hope, and charity. And then ye will always abound in good works. 25. And may the Lord bless you. And keep your garment spotless. That ye may at last be brought to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the holy prophets, who have been ever since the world began, <coughs> having your garments spotless, even as their garments are spotless. Sounds like a pajama party. <laughs> you know, in... No skid marks in this crowd. <laughs> and no uh, visitors, monthly visitors. Uh, spotless in the kingdom of heaven to go no more out. 26. And now, my beloved brethren, I have spoken these words unto you according to spirit which testifieth in me. And my soul doth exceedingly rejoice because of the exceeding diligent diligence and heed which ye have given unto my word. It's like he's prom queen for a day. Aren't you special, biatch? And now, oh, verse 27. And now, may the peace of God rest upon you, you, and upon your houses and lands, and upon your flocks and herds, and all that you possess, your women and your children, according to your faith and good works, from this time forth and forever, and thus I have spoken. Amen. That's chapter 7. It was uh, kind of a dud for a drinking game, but what, what the fuck, you know? Made it work anyway. Interesting shit. Some underlinable verses. And what do you think of the way I'm doing it now? I think I should start naming them off, because I think I've Skipped over shit. You know, it's a problem when you... One more for the road. These are mighty nice. Anyway, I will see you guys in Alma 8. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having, I'm having. <laughs>